Making a change in your career can create a lot of stress and anxiety, but in this video, I will give you three top tips to help make that process as easy as possible. Now, many people out there are making career transitions, right? You might be shifting from the finance uh, industry to the tech industry, doing a boot camp online, training through to learn new coding skills. You might be within the same industry, but moving to a different part. Some people move from a risk or operations team to a sales role or from trading to an algorithmic trading role, making all types of transitions, going from trading commodity products to trading bonds and equity. There's all sorts of transitions that can occur, but what should you consider when you're making those major career changes? So tip number one is really take into account the transition time, right? Because it's not simply that, oh, you're going from one job to the other. It's not like you're doing the exact same thing, which typically people would do when they are shifting jobs. You're going to learn a lot of new skills and you should first plan ahead. Now, if you're moving, for example, from, let's just say tech to finance, right? Or finance to tech. If you're moving from finance to tech, you need to think what training and qualifications do you need? You probably need to do a coding bootcamp. You probably need to do some time, spend some time by yourself doing some online courses about learning how to do basic coding, like uh, JavaScript, how to set up a website, do basics. Uh, CSS, maybe do um, Python, things like that, learn different coding skills and pay for a bootcamp and look for a job through there. Now, if you're going, say, from tech to finance, you need to learn about how to trade products like derivatives, securities, learn the basic financial regulation in the, comp in the country you're living in. And typically there are qualifications you can complete for this. In the UK, you can do this through CISI, which is a professional body within the finance industry for completing qualifications and earning professional qualifications for to demonstrate your ability. And then also you need to think that takes time, right? So it's not an instant process. You don't go from one area to the other, one industry to the other. It takes about at least, I would say, six months to a year to two years, depending on the skills required to make that transition, to learn a new product, to learn a new skill set. So take that into account, that transition time, right? It's going to be a maybe a very busy time in your life to make that change. So don't just, you know, mindlessly think you can switch from one area to the other. Now, point number two is really think about the potential pay. Now, you might go from one uh, particular career to the other, but the experiencing the same salary might take some time. So for example, if you go from a high paying tech career and you're earning $200,000 as a coder working in San Francisco, but then all of a sudden you're moving to finance because you're more interested in finance. But what may happen is, okay, sure. So you do the training, you do the qualifications, but you might start at a more junior level. You're not going to go from $200,000 coder in tech to a $200,000 uh, commodities trader working at Goldman Sachs. You might have to take a few side steps throughout that process to reach the same level of pay. So again, you might go from coding at Google in San Francisco, making $200,000 a year. You transition into finance. You take six months to a year to complete the financial qualifications. And then you start your start your first job, maybe not a major bank, you're starting a mid-level hedge fund, you learn some basic skills, you get some decent pay, hedge funds typically pay quite well and big bonuses, but then you, maybe you're earning 150K. So you need to adjust your lifestyle expectations. Maybe you need to move to a different area, move to a cheaper property if you're renting a property. And you'll need to make those lifestyle adjustments until you can climb up to the salary that you'd ideally want. Uh, just bear in mind that can take a few years. You're not instantly going to go from a high paying job to another high paying job when you're changing your career completely. The other thing is the salary cap. Now, every career, people are already always sold these high salaries. Oh, you can go from making 100K as a trader to 150, 200K, 300K, uh, 400K bonus, things like that. Delusional levels of salary growth expectations are quite popular in finance, but other industries too. Right. Many people, they get salary capped, which means that they're moving forward, but they kind of get stuck at a mid level or a slightly upper mid level. And they can't effectively increase their salary beyond that unless they're good at playing office politics, sucking up to the right people, pushing the woke agenda at work, 
they know someone who's going to hook them up with a more senior role. They're one of the management's favorites, things like that. So in those instances, some people make tons of money, but a lot of people, they get stuck at a mid-level and it's like a middle-class salary. So in the finance industry, I would say a lot of people get stuck, depending what the job is, between 100 and 250K. That's where people can get stuck. And it might sound like a very high salary, but with inflation rates, with you going to work, extending 12 hours a day at work, maybe working on the weekend, doing some extra research around the job. It, when you calculate it and the high tax rate, you're not getting paid that much. And when you're putting all that effort in and you wanna progress, and maybe there's not as many roles for those senior high paying roles, because there are very few of them, the more high you go up the ladder, there's less of those higher paying roles, of course, because it's like a funnel. Um, so then you need to take into account what's the salary cap. You're making a career transition from tech to finance. Where are you most likely going to start at? What are reasonable salary increases? What, where do people tend to end up? For example, in finance, many people, they might not make it to the managing director level. There's only a handful of managing director levels at top banks where they do get paid a lot of money. A lot of people kind of get stuck at the vice president level. So that's like a uh, mid-management, slightly senior level, but mid-management level so depending on the role it won't be tons of money it won't be a massive bonuses so they kind of do get stuck so think about the salary cap in the new job that you're looking for so you can be reasonable in terms of your expectations now, point number three when you pick a career you pick a lifestyle right so if you're moving to a career even if you're enthusiastic about it you have an interest in finance you want to trade a particular product type you read ton of finance news you do a bit of trading on the side you have maybe good sales skills, you like working with people, good client relationship management skills. And those are all great things. Those will get you through the day, the week, the month, and the quarter, and the year, right? And the several years of hard work. But there is always challenges there, right? When you pick a career, you pick a lifestyle. If you're working in sales, you have to understand the long hours. You might have to spend all day in the office, then get ready in the evening and go and meet a client for a couple hours for a few drinks to maintain that client relationship and earn those sales commission from their trading activity. You might be working in a hedge fund or a private equity firm where there are small teams and if you don't get on with one person, it can be quite detrimental to your career. If you're working in an investment bank, you might have big teams. Where there could be a lot of bureaucracy and slow process and, and career progression. If the job gonna involve working in the office, do you like working in the office or do you prefer working from home? Is it more dependent, is your career growth more dependent on your technical skills or your soft skills? And uh, you know, in terms of your people skills. So you need to bear that in mind, right? You don't, when you pick a career, you are picking a lifestyle. So that's how you should see it, okay? Not only, oh, do I have an interest in this? You should think, do I wanna be in the office, dealing with office politics? Can I deal with difficult personalities? Can I, how do I have the technical skills? If, it's, if I'm more of a personality, for example, with myself, I'm more of someone who's focused on technical skills rather than people skills. I can do both, and both are needed in the finance industry. But if a job is more kind of, you know, here's a project, take it, run with it, manage it yourself, and we just want to see the results on a weekly or monthly basis, I'm better at that than sitting in an office and schmoozing and sucking up to people and trying to you know be everyone's friend or whatever just to move forward and get work done so you need to think about what type of personality you are what type of lifestyle do you want and if that career aligns with it it's not going to be perfect but try to align with it as much as you can so just to summarize three key points when you are moving from one career to the other you need to take into account the transition time how long it takes to learn the qualifications and find a new role number two the potential pay that you might be earning what's the potential salary increases that are reasonable to accept, expect. And point number three, when you pick a career, you pick a lifestyle. So think about the lifestyle you want, the personality you have, and what that career will offer you. If it doesn't line up specifically, exactly, just really try to make a slight, um, maybe realignment of exactly what you want and what's available, so it can kind of match up as best as you can. Thanks for listening. There are two recommended videos on the screen right now. There's a free ebook in the description. And I'll see you next time.